The Chartered Institute of Linguists Awards are given every year for exceptional achievement and inspiring others to learn and use languages. And as the highest overall achiever in the Diploma in Translation this year, you are exceptional achievement personified, Madalena. So congratulations. Tell us a Thank little you. bit about yourself and how you became a linguist. Well, I am currently an interpreter, a translator, and I started studying languages at the university, at the Technical University of Civil Engineering in Bucharest, where I got a master's degree in translations, sorry, a bachelor degree in translation. And then I continued with a master's degree in interpreting at uh, Babes Boy University in Cluj-Napoca. What encouraged you to take the diploma in translation? Well, I already had a bachelor degree in translation, so I know that this uh, diploma it has a level seven. It's a level seven qualification, so it's the equivalent of a master's degree. So I can now say that I have the equivalent of a master's degree in translation as well. When you were preparing for the exam, what were the resources that you found most useful? Well, I used a lot uh, the, uh, the samples uh, I found on the CIOL website. It was very useful for me to get to see text used in previous exams and to uh, translate them and then get feedback for my translation. So uh, I found all the information, all the details I needed on your website with the do's and don'ts, tricks and also uh, exam samples. Some people say that the Diptrans is quite a hard exam. How did you find it? Uh, yes, it was quite difficult. It was stressful. Uh, I have an advantage. I have a bachelor degree in translation, so I was quite used to uh, uh, exams in translation, but this was especially difficult because uh, all the units were uh, on the same day so it was quite a long exam and th that added to the stress. So time scale pressure is one of the things that the uh, Diploma in Translation uh, brings to, uh, to a person. Um, how did you prepare for the time scale pressure of taking the Diptrans? Uh, yes, indeed, that's very stressful. Well, uh, when I was preparing for the exam, I tried to time myself uh, while translating the text and uh, I tried to create an exam environment, like uh, to recreate the atmosphere at the exam at home. And I think that really helped me because uh, I was already used to uh, uh, the time pressure you mentioned when I went to the exam. So do you think the Diptrans is a good preparation for, uh, for translating? Yes, definitely, because you have to prepare for the exam and then at the exam you go through all the stress and then you are prepared. You uh, are prepared to offer great translations and to uh, follow the deadline because every time you get a translation, you automatically get a deadline for that translation. So that's very helpful. A good preparation for working life then by the sound. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, Madalena, do you have any specific tips for people taking the Diploma in Translation? Uh, yes, I think it's very important for them to practice a lot before and get feedback from fellow translators. I had the advantage of having uh, uh, my husband, who is also a translator, and he offered feedback uh, on my translations when I was preparing for the exam. And I think that was really helpful. So for future candidates, my tip is try and collaborate with uh, your colleagues, with your translators, in order to get as much feedback as you can on your translation. Madalina, could you give us a piece of advice on how to manage the timescale pressure in the Diptrans? Well, you have to get ready to work in a stressful environment so my advice for future candidates would be to create at home an exam environment to make sure that you recreate that atmosphere you get in the exam and uh, time yourself just imagine you're actually in the you're uh, translating during the actual exam and uh, so when you are really doing that during the exam, the, the time pressure won't, won't seem that stressful. So it's very important to recreate the atmosphere and uh, time yourself and make sure you're prepared for the actual exam. 
So the news of your award will be shared with 20,000 people through our social media channels. And we also have uh, 5,000 very dedicated readers of The Linguist magazine. And we are beginning the search for next year's uh, award winners. So if anybody wants to make a nomination, ciol.org.uk forward slash awards. We're already thinking about um, who we can recognise next year to encourage more people to uh, to develop excellence in language and foster a love of language in more people of all ages that's what we're uh, that's what we're about